so many wires. It feels like miles and miles and miles of wires. And it's for everything. It's for, I mean, the, all the blinkers, all the marker lights, safety features, uh, backup alarms, roof hatches. Uh, they have alarms when they're open, windows, emergency windows, emergency door alarms, uh, regular door open alarms. It's just a lot of wire, man. One of the things that scared us to death early on when thinking about building a schoolie is you look at all these groups and all these people that have had fires. And man, I just, I can't imagine losing everything in a fire. And almost every fire that you see in the schoolie comes back to wiring. And sometimes it's wiring, like the house wiring that people put in. And here lately, I've seen so many stories where people didn't get the wires from all this, the school stuff. and. So then, then just the, the 12 volt systems that are just everywhere. Something rubs and 12 volts, man, it's not a lot of voltage, but it, it gets hot and it can start fires. And we have two dogs. We have a full-blooded little Chihuahua. His name is Miko. Miko, are you a bus dog? I'm a bus dog. And we have a, an 18 year old at the time of this video. 18 year old rescue dog named Muñeca. Just made it to Valdosta to work on the bus. Weekend number three, you can see it in the background. And I have a surprise guest, Muñeca. Muñeca came down with dad. Hey girl. Muñeca. Diga me que piensas. No? Okay. Well, we're here in the buses. Where am I at? There. If you can see it. And they're both our world, man. And we're gonna be leaving them in, in here, in, in the bus. And the thought of leaving stuff in here that would do damage to them and that, and that would hurt them. I mean, forget the bus. Our dogs, man, they're our, our, our kids. And uh, I mean, obviously a lot of people feel like that, but I'm just saying like, when it comes time to doing what we have to do for our bus, for our family, gutting every wire in here that was not gonna be used ever again. And for us, even gutting the wires that were in use for the sake of going back with new wire that we can vouch for where it is and why it is and, and how it's ran and all of those things. Like that was really high on the priority list for us. And I mean, it was actually, it was at the top of my list. Like no matter what happens, no matter how it looks, <laughs> what couch cushions we have or what countertops we have, what air conditioners we have, whatever, like the top of my list was we will replace the wiring. We will consolidate everything. We will get all the extraneous just garbage out of here. And we did it pretty early on and it's difficult and keeping track of everything and, and labeling everything in, in the three fuse blocks that we have, fuse panels. And every it seemed like for a while there, every time that we opened a hatch somewhere, there was another fuse box. And it's honestly, it's crazy. I mean, this is like 250 square feet or something. It's 40 feet long, seven and a half feet wide, and it's a big metal box. And for some reason, we have wires on wires on wires and we have three separate fuse panels and so we've worked really hard to consolidate a lot of that stuff and one of the things that scares people about this is oh man i can't touch anything because the system is so complex and when you really break it down it's i mean it's a diesel motor and a couple of gauges and the rest is what you do with it and we, we just tore out everything and we we were ruthless, man. We went in and cut the wires to everything. And, and honestly, one of the things that made us really chase this and go, go down this path is because I wanted, when we go back with the new wire, I wanted to hook to LED light fixtures. And that's blinkers, reverse lights, marker lights, cabin lights, stair box lights, all the lights in here. 
I want it to be LED for the sake of efficiency and for the sake of a modern and cool look. So since we're gutting all the fixtures anyway, and we may not even be putting them back all in the same places, it just made a lot of sense. Let's just tear out all the wire. I mean, wire tends to be kind of expensive, but it's not super cost prohibitive if it's something that's important, and to us it was. And we're actually running all of our, this is a cool thing, we're running all of our marker lights under the bus. So any, any wiring for that kind of stuff that would just generally be masking taped to the wall is how we found it. Side note, I would super encourage you to pull out all of your wall panels, all of your ceiling panels, because the wires are literally everywhere. And um, safety first. So um, for us, it was safety first. And we found, it looks like masking tape. I'm, it may be a little more fancy than that, I don't know. But there's just wires taped everywhere. And tape itself is flammable too, uh, in the right circumstances. So we're just trying to get all that stuff out, man. And we're gonna put all our marker lights below the floor so we don't have any rogue 12 volt wires just running everywhere. And uh, everything in the house, all the house electricity, all the house power will be in conduit. So the good news about our bus, it's a Thomas Build Safety Liner 2002 model. I'm sure this is a, a lot of buses, but our wires were color coded, so all of the emergency stuff was blue. So we were able to go trace down all the blue wires, and, and the thing you should know, I mean if you don't know, the thing you should know about DC electricity is it's really simple. So you have a positive and a ground, and it works by completing a loop. So you'll find out, like if you, if you just snip a wire, then all of a sudden the ignition doesn't work and your bus doesn't crank up. And a lot of people freak out. A lot of people, uh, you know, take to the streets, take to the forums and they're like, oh, my bus, it won't crank or it's, it's dead forever, I've lost it or whatever. And it's so much more simple than that. We took the blue wire and then there were white wires, which are the ground wires. And everywhere that there was a blue wire, we cut it all the way back to the closest fuse panel where it was, and we looped it back into the ground. Anywhere that there was a system that was uh, gonna wreck the bus, or wreck the, uh, the ability to start the bus, just ground it. And obviously ground it in a way that's safe with wire nuts and things like that, but definitely never, ever, ever, ever twist them together and put electrical tape over it. That is so bad. Uh, don't do that. So use butt splices, wire nuts, and then make sure those are taped up. But just complete the circuit. As soon as you complete the circuit, your fuse box doesn't know that it's not hooked to that window latch anymore or, or that window hinge anymore. It's that simple, man. Just, just complete the loop, ground it, and you're done. And it'll, it'll crank up and your bus won't know the difference and you won't have an extra 75 million feet of wire or whatever it is. That's our story about wiring and uh, we haven't fully finished it yet, but I'm hoping that we can re-navigate some of the stuff and actually delete a few of the fuse panels because while they seem to have thought of a lot of stuff, they haven't thought about, or they, I don't know why they do the, what they do. I don't know why anybody does what they do, but there are certain fuse panels that have, well, this has a little bit of the engine and this has a little bit of the, the stop sign lever simultaneously, like, and then the other one has a little bit of the engine and then, oh, well, this one is the, the flashers for the bus stop. So we're gonna try to put everything related to the engine into one and then uh, into one fuse panel and get rid of the rest. Uh, if we are successful with that, we'll make a new video and we'll show you what we did. But as for now, just know that is the plan. But wiring is super important. Your electrical system is super important. Really, that's, that's the only tip that I have is you can just ground out the switches, but ground it out as close to, uh, to the fuse panel as you can so that you don't have all the wire. You gotta keep yourself safe. Keep your investment safe. We're spending a lot of money here. We're spending a lot of time here and uh, not to mention our favorite things in the world, which are our dogs, uh, are going to be in here. So you got to stay safe and you got to keep yours safe too. So be safe out there. If you like this video, if you like what we are doing, if you found anything in this video helpful or uh, something that you can use in the future for your build or just in general knowledge, uh, I'd really like to hear about it. So if you'd like to put some comments down below or uh, just like the video, uh, anything that you can do to, to help get us ranked better in the, uh, in the old YouTube algorithm, we would certainly appreciate it. And uh, really, we just want to know who's listening. So uh, just say your name if you want to, but Either way, leave a comment. If you made it this far, congratulations, and we thank you for, for being a part of our journey. Mm -hmm.